Well, good morning, everyone. This is Barry's Best Honey. I'm Mike, and I do bees. It is June 15th. I had to think about that. And it's 7.40 in the morning. The sun is above the trees. It is 78 degrees and 83% humidity. So, we call that getting real close to miserable. Welcome to Southeast Louisiana. Yeah, folks, it's a it's a, um, a sticky morning, which is normal for this time of year. And, of course, it makes you really not want to put a bee jacket on. But I do need to put a bee jacket on because today, I guess I want to harvest some honey boxes off of the boz. It's how I do. It's not a how-to video. To harvest honey or not to harvest honey? That is the question. The dilemma is not really a big one, but it's still a dilemma. And we have honey on the hives that is capped and ready to go for the most part. But it is July 15th, I mean June 15th, and I don't like to really harvest this early because um, it's not always about plugging the nest at this point because the flow has stopped, the main flow. There's still some clover blooming that hadn't burned off. There's elderberry. It doesn't, wild elderberry does not yield a bunch of honey. But it does yield some honey. I'm sorry, nectar. But nonetheless, we don't have a lot going on when it comes to uh, nectar coming in. And it's the time of season. I want them to dry it out. I want them to cap it all off. And there's always plenty of capped in there at this time. But again, it's not always about plugging the nest. It's so hot. Sometimes it's just about space. And they're so large right now that like you can't tell now because it's cool this morning relative that's a relative term like that colony right here this thing is usually just covered in bees by afternoon when it's 95 today that'll be covered in bees once that one's going to get harvested because there's not many bees but like this one here you can tell it's packed i won't harvest off it because the one on the end here it's usually just packed they actually got a little bearding left over on the bottom if you look closely right down there, there's a little bit of bearding still and with the heat and the population still being so very strong, um, that can push to overheating and overcrowding. And that can actually push to swarming to an extent, even though we haven't like plugged the nest. So the goal is usually July when there is absolutely nothing coming in for the bees to um, draw down their population. The queen slows down, not as much pollen coming in. That's the trigger usually with the nectar. But pollen really triggers her to begin to lay. As that comes down, we lose we lose the laying, we lose uh, the large brood nest, the populations come down. Then when we pull in July, they're not as large and huge. And so, you know, you go, well, do I continue to go forward and pull this early until they have drawn down some and there's still some nectar coming in? Am I limiting them? Uh, you know, so it's like, well, and I never pull this early usually. I like to pull it one time and get some folks over and we just do a bunch and it works out and then it's all done and they're down into their two boxes so it's kind of early to put them down into two boxes but yet the honey's ready and i got a huge schedule come july and i just have got to get ahead of the game because i cannot be extracting 40 and 50 boxes of honey the first week or two of july and still have enough time to do everything i need to do but july is packed up with engagements and and things that have got to get done along with my work and so it just makes sense to begin to pull some of the honey not all of the honey that's my question i don't like to pull this early but i figure if they're not packing a lot in even though the populations are strong we're going to go ahead and pull the full boxes and if i can pull maybe 10 12 today maybe 10 12 next week maybe only eight you know i don't know whatever i feel like because it's miserable out right now that still gives them space it brings them down slowly as their population goes down slowly and hopefully we don't run them out of the colony or overheat them or overcrowd them and we get what we need they get what they need and everybody's happy you know we always like happy happy so that's what we're gonna do hi right, folks I am out here at the colonies I'm prepping my fume boards so I am sweating like a horse of course a lot of people say you sweat like a pig, but pigs don't sweat. Horses, on the other hand. I'm almost out of this stuff. This is going to be tight. So 
So again, what am I doing? Why am I doing it like this? I'll tell you why. Because I got to get caught up. If I sit around here and wait to harvest, I'm in a jam with everything I got going on. So uh, I'm just going to take a box or two off of some of them so I don't overcrowd them. And even if they are bringing in something, there's no room in the supers. You say, well, then put them back on. In some cases, I might put some supers back on. I don't know. I'm going to try and get these things a super here and a super there and leave them where they're at. Some of the strong ones, I may not take them. So I'm just looking for capped supers, pull them off, and what this is going to do, it's going to at least allow me to get ahead of the game in July. Uh, i got a lot of plans for July, so um, we want to get these things stripped off as best we can, little by little. And then, you know, each week, do 10, 12 of them, we're good to go. But even though there's not a flow, I don't want to overcrowd them. So, let's get busy. Let's throw some uh, fume boards on. That's what we do. We harvest honey. Another thing I can be looking for is how weak are they? That's what we did last week. I said that this one, this brick sitting this way, said it could be harvested. If they're kind of weak, we don't want to leave them on here either because beetles are starting to pick up soon. Really want to pull an outside one. That tells us something. All right, just about fully capped because those will be the ones that aren't. That one's capped. We're good. And pull the center. I will dry these down. This one does not look all the way capped. It's not. So it looks like we got that all the way through and through. Let's take a look and shake. I got no nectar coming out. Uh, majority of these are capped. Let's put this on here. And let's look at the next. Oh my gosh, did I not leave a vent in this one? This is a brand new box, as you can tell. Let's move them out of the way. Uh, 10 frame box. This is a packed up colony, but it's got... Two full supers on it. I'm going to fume one of these. Take it. Maybe leave another one on there for next week to get. They're strong enough to maintain. All right, fuming two, moving to three. I do have a couple hives to look at if we got time. And I might set my pollen trap. There's a little hive beetle. The outside ones appear to be... This was a pretty irate colony back in the day. This was my queen builder. Yeah, they're not hardly even capped. I do the shake test on them before I even pull them. Sorry, bees. Um, I'm going to leave this one for now. I'll watch it, make sure we got enough bees to guard it. And this one I know over here should have full boxes. But they were also packed with bees and still are. They obviously must have requeened. This was one early on that didn't have a queen. Oh, my goodness, when was that? We, we did a video on it. Uh, but they've grown, so that means they're queened up. Uh, full box on top. Probably don't even need to look. Let's pull some anyway. You want to pull some anyway? Let's do just that. Starting to see beetles more often now. That's normal. Uh, so it's really time to get these off. Yeah, see, they're just finishing this frame on the other side. See that? So this box is full. I'm going to fume one off of this. I'm in kind of in a hurry. I only got a, about three hours to get this done. But at the same time, I don't want to overheat so I'm very careful about um, just taking my time hydrating going in hydrating regularly I have the brick turned so that I know that this could be a slack colony it's got two supers three supers because it's a single a lot of bees still though I'm telling you that but they're working the top super that's why I can look in there and see it's not capped so what I may do is pull this and yank a middle super off if it's capped Th this will end up getting um, harvested the normal time frame of maybe around, usually July 4th is the, is the start date for me and most people. I know Mr. Ed does it starting July 4th, depending on what weekend we have free. Now this one doesn't look like it's full. There's still, so I might pick and choose on this one because I got capped over here and uncapped. Let's see what's in the bottom one. That one should be capped. It's been on there for a while. Number two, I think number two had some good bees in it. No, this was a weak colony. That's what it was. And it grew at the last minute. And I got thinking, wow, maybe they will do something. And they did. 
but not extraordinarily. So what I'm going to do with this one is pick and choose frames. I'm a consolidated super. So there looks to be, this is a single, uh, looks to be a good amount of bees as far as, uh, you know, guarding some comb, but let's make sure, let's get some cap stuff out of here. That's not all the way, so I'm not going to take that one, but I will take the one next to it. Smashing bees accidentally. This is how I used to harvest honey, shaking and brush, but I don't have my brush, but oh, that was always, I'd do like 10 hives like this and be wore out. So they slide right in the old hive, Butler. This is a nine frame box. I'm not going to smoke. I probably need to just throw a fume board on top of one of these. And, yeah, see? Full frames. We'll take those. We'll give them back some parcels that they left. And that'll be good enough for them. It looks like most of the frames they're doing are on this side of the box. On the left side. They're all full. We're just about to take this whole box. So you're probably asking, why are you not using your hive lifter, Mike? Well... I told y'all before, I make no bones about it. It does slow me down. And I'm in one of those days where I'm definitely in a hurry, folks. I'm going to leave that one. Um, I hate it that it's that way, but I'm in a hurry. Somebody asked me why I had an old busted up deep box out here. Well, here's why. I can now use this box uh, to stack this one and this one. Mm. Okay, this is a lot of work, but I, be, I do believe there won't be many like this. I'm only taking these out of this one. Normally, this is a much stronger colony. I would leave this one alone, but I do happen to know that these bees are not that strong. I mean, they've got bees, but it's beetle season, folks. And so I just want to get nine off of this. And take a box from them that's really what I want to do so we're filling this back up I put kind of an empty one there I'll put this one here it's got foundation on one side it's drawn so as I'm working this you can see there's plenty of bees in here it's not that we're lacking bees but we're not as strong as I'd like to guard and as we get closer to July I do not want them struggling to keep the beetles at bay so I'm going to space these back out. Alright, that's nine. So again, about the hive lifter, it does take me some time. And I only have a couple hours. And again, that's the theme of my season. It's not that my bee yard has gotten bigger, my operation's bigger. It's just things have picked up elsewhere in my life. With the jobs and stuff like that. So this is a full one. I just need three. And then we can finish our nine frame box out. Bees are starting to get aggravated. Let's get one more out of there. Let's get this one. Let me get the full ones out for sure. There we go, another full one. This is time consuming. Once robbing starts, if it starts, I hope it doesn't, but if it doesn't, that means we still got to flow. But nonetheless, I don't want to start robbing, and that's an easy way to start it this time of year. I would never normally do this in July. Everything comes off in July or it stays, one or the other. No piecemealing. There's the high butler. Nine frames strong. Locked down, ready to go on a trailer. They've been fuming for a while over there. Got to get those off. And then I'm going to just get busy. And just start pulling some boxes, folks. Nine frames of honey. That's pretty heavy. Oh, my goodness. That's a nice unit right there. All right. Now let's blow these out. So what I use, folks, is this little bench top blower. To be honest, with this small tube, it actually does better. Oh, that's hot. Yeah, they ought to be out. It does better than the big one. Uh, it really does. All right, here comes the grunts, because you know, I got a wireless mic now. <laughs> oh my goodness. I think a reason I don't get as much done also, not just my job now I'm picking up, but also, the older you get, you start realizing you don't get as much done in one day as you used to could. 
as you used to could. That's southern. These boxes are full of honey. I'm going to take this other box too. I'm going to fume it. Take it. And we're going to take the one you're sitting on. This is a nice new one. 10 frame. I'd like to I actually want to take the one below it. If there's no bees in the one below it, I might take it. But I bet there are. This hive's got, well, that's a heavy box. I don't know. Wow, is that loaded with honey or what? Oh, such beautiful honey. No bees in this one. Just a couple hanging out. I might do is take these two and if it looks too packed later I might put an empty one on it because if it's that strong it can guard itself but we're gonna take this box 10 frame much lighter much lighter I bet it's five pounds ten pounds difference well guys I'm gonna go ahead and get busy doing this I'm not gonna bore you with this because this is just gonna be me back and forth uh, doing what I do you know what I do I do me let me get this all done. Maybe we'll peek in some nukes. Maybe we won't. And I'll show you what we get off of this. What I'm going to take for the week. What we're going to harvest. This is going to help me. Again, I'm not totally sweating swarms too much. But you know, never say never with honeybees. Wow. Never say never. Never say never. Alright, let me get this done. I'll be back with y'all later on. When we get them all over to the honey house. Well folks, here is the pollen hive. Uh, one of them. I haven't set the other two up yet. Let's smoke them. Now, loosen this. Just for whatever reason, when you go back down with this thing, they really get upset. Let me get, them, let me get down here. This is a low hive. Another thing to watch with my pollen traps I notice here is I um, I tend to get uh, a lot of carpenter ants. I gotta keep them out of here. Keep them out is not an answer, uh, the right thing to say. Run them out constantly. Look at all these dead bees. That's the ones that were probably stuck in there when we first started. There's some pollen. So somebody was stuck in there. All right, so turn that. Tighten this. Now they can't get back in that top. I'm forcing them in the bottom. The ones with the pollen, they're going to drop off into the pollen trap. Pollen, pollen drawer. Let's make sure it's cleaned out. They're gonna hunt for a little while, just like when we set it up. They've got to get used to the new entrance. Let's look in our drawer. Yeah, we got some bees stuck in here. They were stuck in the bottom. They usually never get in that drawer. I'm not sure how they did that this time. All right, we're trapping pollen. So, like I said, one thing about that thing is when I go to drop it back down and open them up, for whatever reason, when you drop it down, the bees are furious. I, I don't know whether they're still remembering that entrance and they're just mad I don't know whether the guard bees are guarding that little crack I don't know what I know is dropping it down I usually put my gloves on and throw some heavy smoke to it because uh, they come out of there with a vengeance but then again when I'm trapping pollen it's normally at the end of a dearth the bees are stressed you know so whatever the reason I know that's how it happens so all right, I'm still pulling honey. I just figured I'd do that real quick. Folks, while we're over here by the pollen, I want to check this nuke. This is a mating nuke. Don't want to give him a lot of smoke. Uh, I want to see if we made a queen. I'm not hopeful. Uh, I gave him two full frames of brood, each one. But I'm not hopeful this late in the year for mating queens, but I just wanted to give it a shot. I don't have my glasses on. So it's gonna be hard to see, but they took to the cells, uh, the uh, the unmated queens very well in the cages. But the brood has emerged. The bees seem calm. I don't see any eggs. I can shine it in the sun and see down in the cell to an extent. I should see eggs this week. I can give her one more week, and if not, they didn't make it. It's just a terrible time, and I knew it going in. But I said, you know what? I'll just get three and see what happens. These are uh, these are from Corey. I just wanted to get a few of his. The SH is not a silver bullet at all. There's a lot of monitoring that goes with it. There's a lot of getting the genetics into your yard, 
but you know you got to start somewhere and i figured well i got some of his we got the usda b lab participating but right now they're calm but they don't look like there's any eggs i don't see a queen i just accidentally put my thumb on a bee and she stung me in the finger but these will have to be thrown into another colony if i don't get a queen because it's time to get everybody combined and ready for summer yeah i don't see a queen of course don't have my glasses i'll check when i edit the video not looking good for this one and i should be able to see a mated queen by now uh because there's not that many bees well we'll see but that's not hopeful i got two others the apame is one and by the way the queen next to the apame i think i squashed her when i put it back together so i did not have to split that queen off because <laughs> i think i harmed her in some way maybe when i was sliding frames back in i wanted to give her until the uh, other one made it if she made it and if not combine them and if she did mate move her um but i guess i went in the week later and in seven days they had emergency cells built in there that means something happened to her during that inspection but i'll be honest that genetic i was happy to have a laying queen in there but that genetic is not a good one i got a, i got her sister next door and it's it's had nothing but problems with requeening over and over and superseding and i got notes on them you know trying to supersede i only tried to swarm once that's why i pulled her off but then all of a sudden once you get her laying all of a sudden they supersede again and i've seen that before and it's it's just bad genetics so i i didn't mind losing her it was good to have her laying it's always good to get a queen laying so in case i need her to get somebody just to get them through winter it gets them through winter but then they got to be requeened so wasn't a big loss but the apame is uh, kind of a mess right now because if that other queen doesn't get mated off or not we've already dropped pollen look that's been that pollen's been in the last hour so definitely bring a pollen in why these bees are getting in here is beyond me they shouldn't be getting in here all right folks same situation with this one now, this one seems very calm they're leaving an area polished i could be just a week too soon on some of these bees that smoke is blowing across this frame Best I can tell without glasses, I don't see eggs with my flashlight, but I see polished cells. So maybe they need another week. There's a queen right there. See her? She looks tiny still. All right, well, at least we got a queen. I'm going to leave her alone. I saw them all released, too, by the way, so I know they're in here. They were in here. Let me put it that way. It's about getting mated at this point. So maybe they're just not ready yet. I'm not even going to open the apame yet then. Because um, I don't want to take a chance of hurting one if they're still waiting to be going. And I might have missed that other one. Because honestly, my, without my glasses, it's hard to see. I s spotted her because she was a different color. And I had to really squint to make sure that was her. I'm not going to mess with the apame, guys. Uh, I don't want to open that up because that's such a tight colony or tight frames. I don't want to take a chance. I know they were all in there. Well, folks, it is a wrap for the day, but it was actually a wrap a few hours ago. It, uh, it got done at about 11.30 this morning. It was 93 degrees at 11.30 uh, is what it had gotten to. But at the same time, uh, the humidity went down to 55%. So that's what's nice is I'd rather work in this brutal heat when it's baking me a little more than that humidity because at least it dries you out as you go. It burns the humidity up. That humidity just absolutely zaps me. Um, it didn't this morning. I stayed plenty hydrated uh, and only worked till 11.30. It started about 8.30. Um, but I took my time and I had a good time in the bees. Uh, I just had a good time today. It was fun. Uh, I like it when it's fun like that. So yeah, quick, uh, quick and easy, you know, don't kill yourself. So did not use the hive lifter. I think if I'd had the hive lifter, I could have uh, managed it pretty quickly, only doing a few. So uh, I think I am going to break it out next time because it does make it so much easier not lifting those boxes. Um, just fuming them, bring them up on the lifter, blow down and blow the bees out, pull it, throw it on a trailer. And once you get a rhythm, it works well. So, so we went through the nukes and before I go in, because it's noisy in there with the fans, um, I got to thinking about the nukes. I did not even go in the Apame because I need to give them another week. And I got to thinking, you know, when I put those queens in there, they were released, the ones I manually released and the one they released. Uh, and we had like a week of rain, overcast, bad weather. And I'm wondering whether they're just a week behind. 
I did find that one queen. She didn't look like she was necessarily mated yet, but I'm wondering whether that weather, that week long of just bad weather, I wonder if she just is delayed getting all her mating flights in. I don't know. So going to give them another week. Um, I do know all the queens were released. I saw all of them and know they were in there. So it's where they got mated. That's the question. So let's go inside and uh, let's take a look at my system. If y'all haven't seen it in the previous videos, here's how I dry the honey down, which most of it's capped, but tallow is a very wet honey, even capped, it's very wet. So I like to dry it for a couple days and that's what I'm going to do. So if you haven't seen it before, this is my setup. Now I will, I will get the AC and usually put it on dry initially. And then I put it on cool um, and jack the temperature up but it still stays cool in here. I heard, had folks say that, um, hey, maybe you should put the temp up real high and make a hot room. Well, it works just as well cold. It just makes the honey harder to come out. And I still really can't make it a hot room because this is climate controlled storage in addition to where I uh, do my honey. So anyway, what I do is I have a shim under there, under the other one, and I put a shim here. I put a box fan on, they're on high right now. I had that on dry, now it's on cool at 80. If I leave it on dry, the temperature drops way down into the 60s, and that really makes the honey hard to come out. Well now, with the dehumidifier, we're at 35%. And I just blow air through the, uh, through the stacks. So that's our stack for today. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, which one of those is comb honey. So that other one is a comb honey. It's not gonna win any contests. It's a little wavy this year, but you know what? I'm grateful to have it this year. You might be asking about the small hive eggs that could ruin my honey boxes. Well, the key is getting the air that's going through these down to at least 55% humidity. So if we're 55% or less, that dries out the beetle eggs. The beetle larvae eggs dry out at 55% or less. We're killing beetle eggs right now. If you didn't and you left these in the summer like they are now, if I were to leave these without drying them for three days or so, I'd start seeing larvae coming out and they would destroy the honey and they would slime it. That is where we're at, folks. We are done for the day. Uh, of course, it's later. Uh, I had somewhere to be at, at uh, one o'clock. So I got done just in time, was able to get showered and get out the door, but uh, that's easy. That's easy money, being able to just go out and do a few at a time. I think that's what I'm gonna do. These will be extracted in a couple days. Then we'll go back in the next weekend, weather permitting, of course, knock out about 10 more. And you know, uh, doing 10 at a time, so next week we do 10 more, that probably leave me what, about, I don't know, 15 to 20 more out there. And then I've got 10 in town that gotta come in and uh, it'll be done. So, but come July, the only thing that should be left on any of the colonies are stuff that isn't all the way filled, very, very strong colonies, or stuff that may not be capped out all the way. Um, and by July, it's coming off regardless. I'll just dry it down, we'll pull it all off, and uh, we'll be done. So I think I'm gonna like this, doing it this way. I think it's gonna be easier. So I'm gonna call it quits for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I sure appreciate all y'all watching. It's Barry's Best Honey, I'm Mike, and I do bees. Y'all have a wonderful, wonderful week, and may God bless you. We'll see y'all later.